everyone. So I am happy to announce that I feel like I have finally gotten back on track and on top of watering my plants on a regular basis again since everything happened that happened with Toby. However, I am still massively behind on other planty chores. And so today we are going to attempt to get caught up on all of the other planty chores that need to be done. I have a lot of plants that need to be trimmed. They're dragging the floor. They're tempting Theo. He's actually chewed on some of them. So we've got to get those trimmed down and propagated. And actually you guys, speaking of Theo, Somebody decided he wanted to get a jump start on the planty chores we need to do today at 3 a.m. when he somehow pulled everything down off of the furthest shelf, or I guess I should say the closest shelf to the window behind the couch. I seriously woke up to just a crash. I went in there and the string of pearls plant and my Hoya Curtisii and the Dr. Pepper bottle that was on the shelf were all on the couch, dirt everywhere. He broke off a ton of vines, as you can see here. So yeah, Theo decided it was time to go ahead and start propagating, I guess, and I'm not exactly happy about it because he snapped off entire vines. I'll explain more when we go look at the plants, but yeah, not happy about that. I did go ahead and cut those up into smaller bits and I went ahead and put them in water just because I didn't want to leave them out until this point today. Also, I was worried he would jump on the counter and start messing with them. So anyways. <laughs> That's already been started and I'm sure Theo is probably going to help us or try to help us in his way with our planty chores today as well. But in addition to that, I do have some of the plants that I dry rotted have gotten enough roots to pot up, actually quite a few of them. They've been ready to pot up for a while and I just haven't done it. So we're gonna get those potted up today. I have a couple of corn propagations I've had in the works that need to be potted up. And then also because Theo is just getting more into the habit of trying to chomp on plants. And sometimes I do think it is to get my attention, but other times I think when he thinks it's food time and I don't feed him right away, I think he's going to chew on him because he's hungry. I don't know, I could be wrong, but I need to try to deter the behavior. So another thing we're gonna be doing today, let me grab it real quick, is working on putting together this organic pet grass kit that I picked up at PetSmart, I believe it was. So a lot of you guys have told me that cat grass has worked for you guys to deter your cats from chewing on other plants. I've honestly always been concerned that it would make them think it's okay to chew on plants and then they would chew on all the plants. But pretty much everybody I've talked to has said no, they just like it so much that that's the only plant they chew on. So we're gonna see if this works or not. Now I do know that I could have bought some already grown, but I'm worried about pests. So I figured we're just gonna grow it from scratch that way less likely, fingers crossed, that we're gonna have any kind of pest issue related to it. So we're gonna be doing that today. And let's see, there might be a few other things that we're gonna do, but let's just go ahead and get started. And since we already had Theo start the propagation, trim and propagation process, let's just go ahead and get all the plants trimmed that need to be trimmed and get those into water and then we'll move on from there. So as you can see, you guys, we are about to hit the floor and Theo just walked in here. So we may be getting a little help from him. He's currently licking my foot, but I don't know if you guys can see, but he has bit off the end of that vine. He's bit off the end of this vine. The leaf is still there trying to come out, but it's damaged on the very end of it there. So yeah, that's part of the reason we need to trim this plant. Honestly, I'm probably gonna need to relocate this at some point. I have mentioned in a past video that I wanna do a planty wall in my bathroom. If I get around to actually doing that, this is one of the plants that I will probably put on that wall and that will help solve this issue with Theo. But right now I'm gonna take it up pretty high just because it has been growing so quickly. I don't want it to grow out like just super quick again and we have to propagate it again. So probably right below where the opening on the nightstand starts is what I'm thinking. Okay, and then I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna cut that one or not. It's actually, Theo, he's over here trying to attack the cuttings, you guys. This is actually kind of stuck on some other ones. It's coming off the other side. Uh, I don't know. I think I'm gonna leave this one for now, save it for another day. Okay guys, so next up is my Marble Queen Pothos again. I feel like I am constantly having to give this plant a trim. It is just growing like mad, but once again, it is dragging the floor now. By some miracle though, Theo has not chewed on this one. 
don't know why. But yeah, so luckily we don't have any damage from that, but the longer I leave them on the floor like this, the more likely it is that he's gonna mess with them. So let's get up in there and give her a trim. Also real quick, you guys, where this one vine is starting to really push a lot of green, I wanna cut this one way, way back. Part of the reason it's doing this is because I typically have this side facing either in the corner or this direction so it's not getting as much light. I probably need to try to rotate this after we do this trim so that this side is facing the window, but I don't want it to keep putting out green leaves. So I need to cut it higher up where it was still variegated. So let's trace this one up and figure out where that is and cut this one first. Actually, you guys, and I do remember this now, we actually did this in a past video. I wanted to stop the all green leaves. And so we did trim it right here once before and what has happened is here's where the new growth has come in off of where we cut. And look, this is all beautifully variegated. There's no like big green patches or anything. That's why we trim back to variegation when we start to get all green is because then we can get back to looking like this. However, Theo, I see you over there. I see you over there, don't you chew on anything. However, what happened also is that up here, if you can see here, it spotted or sprouted out a new growth point here in addition to down here. And this is where we're getting the bigger green leaves with just a little bit of variegation. So what I am going to do is simply cut off this offshoot here that's giving us all of the lack of variegation. And then this will keep growing with the beautiful new variegation. If I can find my snips, here we go. Okay, so next one I wanna cut is this really long one in the back. And I mean, she is growing so fast, you guys. I feel like I have to cut like way far up or else I'm just gonna be doing this again in a few weeks. So, oh, we are gonna have a lot of Marble Queen Pothos plants available for people to buy here in the next few weeks. Let's see. I think I'm gonna go up, eh, I think I'll go right below the stool line or the plant stand line right there. Okay, and so that just leaves us with this one. I don't really wanna cut this one super high up. I might just cut it like a little bit higher than where this vine is growing out. So let's see. And I think that'll be good. Okay, so next up is my Pilea Glauca. The lighting's gonna be difficult, but hopefully you guys can see She's gotten really long. Let me just angle you down for a second. Really long. So I wanna trim these lower vines off probably right around where the blinds start there is what I'm thinking. And then I do have somebody already who wants a propagation of this plant. So once it roots and gets potted up, I do have somebody who's gonna be buying that. So that's exciting. But let's get up in there and go ahead and make our cuts. And while I'm doing this, another thing I should have mentioned while we were trimming the other plants is when I am taking cuttings off of those epipremnums, I am making sure that I'm not cutting where I previously cut because I don't want to cut by a spent node and then not have new growth happen. So always make sure you're checking for where the last place you cut was and don't cut in that same spot again. All right. That one. That one, you, oh, come on, untangle yourself. <laughs> Go there, oops, plant on the floor, it's okay. And here, and I think that will be good for that one. Okay, you guys, so real quick, you can see here what the Curtisii and Pearl look like right now. And what really upsets me about what happened with Theo and Pearl is that I was just gonna trim bottom pieces of Pearl off, but he ripped whole vines out. So now she doesn't look as full as she did. It's just very, very upsetting. I did also <laughs> at 3 a.m. go ahead and cut the few remaining long pieces off of the Curtisii already just so he wasn't tempted. I also tucked up and I just untucked it the linearis, because as you can see, super long. So I had tucked it up onto the shelf at 3 a.m. And so that way he couldn't mess with it, but this is just gonna be a temptation for him now and it is touching the couch. So I'm gonna go ahead and get up in there and give this gal a trim. So here. And then I can see right here, there is an old 
stem piece that is died off, that's where I previously cut it. So once again, I don't want to cut in that same spot. So I'm going to go a little bit higher on that one. And then I think we'll go here. Maybe here. And I think we'll just leave it like that for now. Okay guys, I've got all of our cuttings here, but there actually is one other plant that I need to propagate. And I've only ever done this in one video. It was literally like one of the very first videos on this channel that I cringe when I go back and I look at it. But it is my Graptovaria, which is one of my succulents. This plant is looking a little wonky. As you guys can see, it is kind of growing out to the sides. I don't know why it's kind of wanting to go over the edge of the pot. I mean, it's been in a southern facing window. It should be standing straight up, but for whatever reason, it's getting a little crazy. So I am going to go ahead and propagate this again, and I am going to be using what's known as the beheading method. So basically all we're going to be doing is we're going to be cutting this off like right at the soil line. And then from there, we're just going to leave the stems as they will be in this pot and just keep treating it normally and they will start to grow back. That's exactly what I did the last time that I propagated this. So this is the new growth that came back from the remaining stems that I just left in the pot. And then I'll explain kind of after we get these cut what we're gonna do with the actual propagations. Like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna cut really close to that soil line. Ugh, there's one. Sorry about the rattling on the pot, you guys. For anybody new, I have something called essential trimmers. It causes me to shake, and that's why the pot's rattling. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get this one right about here. Okay, and then if you can see here, all of this is just like aerial roots, basically. When you get aerial roots on a succulent, you guys, typically it's because it's seeking out moisture from the air and it would indicate that perhaps you aren't watering it frequently enough but i know i'm watering this plant plenty frequently i don't know why it just started putting out a ton of these i don't know in my experience i'm not sure that that is an accurate statement but everything i've read says that that's why succulents put out aerial roots if anybody else knows differently please comment down below and let us all know okay so now that we've cut these off it's going to be a few days before I can actually pot these up because I need to let the ends callus over. So with succulents, it's really important to do that because you don't want them to potentially rot and succulents will rot pretty easily, especially like the thicker the stem is, like the more likely it is to rot if you just try to pot it up right away without letting it callus. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these in a dark corner on my countertop here in my kitchen for a day or two. It might not take more than a day because this is a pretty thin, thin stemmed one. But basically I'm just looking for this end to get completely hardened off. Once that happens, all I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a pot, I'm gonna fill it with cacti and succulent soil. I'm gonna wet that soil down and I'm literally just gonna shove this plant into the top of that soil and then start treating it like normal. That's all there is to this type of propagation. So let me go set these in the dark dark corner and get this pot put back where it goes and then we'll work on chopping up our vines. Okay, so as far as our other cuttings go, we are just gonna be propagating these in water and with our epiprimnum vines, we are going to cut them up into individual nodes before we put them into water. With the other vines, we are gonna leave more than one node on those and part of the reason I wanna do that, especially with this one, the Pilea Glauca is because I want it to already kind of be trailing for the lady that wants to buy this. Now with the Linearis, same thing. I'm just gonna leave some extra nodes on these just because I want to have some trailing already starting if possible, but I also wanna have enough to make a full pot. And honestly, I might save these and combine them with my Linearis because it's pro, oh, I take that back. I don't know you guys. I was gonna say it's probably gonna need to be repotted soon, but. Hi, Theo. Yes, I know you want to help by chewing and playing with it like it's a toy, but it's not a toy. Sit down. Okay, so it, I was gonna say, I think it's gonna need to be repotted soon, but it's in a clear pot and last time I watered it, thinking back on it, I don't think it's gonna need to be repotted soon. So this will probably just become a propagation that I will then sell. Please stay down, Theo. I know you want to help us with our planting chores, but your version of help is not really help, sir. You gonna be good? Nope. Nope. 
I have a feeling this is going to be an even bigger problem in this video than it was in the last video we filmed in the kitchen, but we'll see how it goes. I did just give him some food too, because I thought that would like, I don't know, buy him off, I guess, but apparently not. Okay, so this is one little tiny cutting that came off and this is kind of the shortest that I would want to go on this. So let's go ahead and just get this one into some water. I don't even know which one of these I want to use. I guess we'll use this one. And I could remove the leaves from the lowest node and it actually, you know what, you guys, I think I will. It'll help it to root a little bit quicker, but you don't necessarily have to. I didn't the last time that we propagated this and it got roots just fine. Pileas root crazy fast, by the way, you guys, like my aluminum plant, which is my Pilea cadirii, those things, oh my gosh, I didn't get all the leaves. I thought I did. They root so quickly and so do these, Theo. Just don't chew on the plant. He has decided he's gonna lay on the kitchen table, which he's not supposed to do that because I did also discover, you guys, that the damage on the Philodendron Splendid, the new leaf that was coming in, that I wasn't sure what was happening. And then I told you guys, I thought maybe it could have been from him, but I was kind of like, it's really high. I don't know how he would have reached it. I finally figured out it was him and he reached it by getting up on the kitchen table, reaching out, pulling the tip of the plant towards him and chewed on it. He's also chewed on the new leaf that's coming in, it hasn't actually opened yet, but I'm sure it's gonna have holes in it when it does come in from him doing that. I mean, he was so chill the first few days, the so first week actually that I had him home and now he has just become a bit of a wild child. And for those of you who have recommended spray bottles, first of all, that never worked with Toby. Might actually be why Toby ended up liking showers so much, who knows, but I am, I don't really like doing it because they look at you like you're like torturing them. And I know you're supposed to try and spray them when they can't see you, but sometimes that's hard to pull off. I have tried it. His hackles went up like crazy, like fur standing on end. He was very mad at me. I felt very bad, but he also didn't like it. So I have been trying to do that, but I tried earlier when he was doing something else bad as well and he was not deterred at all. So he might end up being like Toby and not care. Please don't push that off the table. He was over there trying to push some piece of paper, like I think it's a bill, off of the table. Why? I don't know, I guess it was in his way. He didn't like where it was, who knows? But anyways, so I don't know if the spray bottle technique is gonna keep working or not, but only time will tell. And maybe the cat grass that we're gonna grow out will help the situation. But right now I'm just gonna finish getting these cut up into our little sections and then we will move on to probably the linearis next. All right, you guys got all of those in water. Thankfully they all fit in one thing. And we're gonna start in on the linearis. And I realized I, I think I might've lost my train of thought because Theo had not finished what I was telling you guys about removing the leaves. So if I did, sorry if this is repetitive, <laughs> but basically a plant can grow roots without you removing the leaves around a node. But if you remove the leaves from around a node, you're freeing up energy in a way to be able to allow that plant to create roots more quickly because now it's not having to sustain leaves that are attached to that node as well. So that's why lots of times it's a good idea to remove the leaves that are around the node that you're putting into water. But if you don't, it'll still eventually get roots. This is trying to stick to itself. So for those of you, uh -uh, Theo, he sees this and definitely thinks toy, you stay down there. So for those of you who don't know Hoya, mm -mm, tell me what you guys, stay down. So for those of you who don't know, Hoyas do have a milky sap and it's very sticky and sometimes it can be irritating to people's skin. So if you are somebody with sensitive skin, you might wanna wear gloves when propagating Hoyas, but it's just like wanting to stick to itself and the counter and everything else right now, which is kind of annoying. Okay, I think I'm gonna cut this up so that we have nine sections. So I will cut each of these right here in half and then I will cut this into three parts. And I think that will be good. So I think that's what we're gonna do. And I am, see how it's sticking? 
because it's sticking to the counter. It's crazy. And I am going to remove the bottom two leaves off of each of the cuttings. All right. Okay. So I'm just going to keep plowing through these and then we will move on to our epiprimnum cuttings. Okay, linearis is good to go. Let's go ahead and let's do the pearls in jade pothos first here. And this is the second time? Yeah, I think this is only the second time that we propagated this. This is a much slower growing epiprimnum in my experience. It is, however, a nice compact one. So if you guys aren't aware, it was a mutation of this, I believe, of the Marble Queen pothos and they isolated it and created this new kind of cultivar of it. And one of the features that they liked about it was that it stayed more compact and doesn't get as big or as massive. But I think because of that also, it grows a lot slower, just a theory. But anyway, so we are just gonna cut this one up into individual nodes. And I do need to be careful though, to make sure, and it's probably come more into play on this one, that if there is a place that I have previously cut on there, I need to be careful about not completely separating that node by itself because it will already have a spent growth point on it. So I need to make sure that I have a node attached to that spent growth point node that has a viable growth point. So on this one, I'm not removing leaves at all. I'm just cutting, like I said, into these individual nodes and then the roots will start to come out where you see the aerial roots that are already kind of like starting as little nubs on here. And when I do go to sell plants like this, I definitely like to make sure there is minimum six vines in a pot. If it is a plant where I'm kind of worried about if some of these are going to die off when I put them into the pot, for example, syndapsis, I don't think I've ever potted up a syndapsis where there wasn't at least one casualty, one node that died off. So I always make sure I put like at least eight in a syndapsis pot up from a propagation. But with these, they typically don't die off. So we will put a minimum of six in each pot. Now, this is the top cut, the top part of that vine. Hopefully you guys can see where Theo has chewed on the end of that. There is some chewage before that. So this might be a situation where this leaf didn't come out because he chewed on it. And this one, I'm not sure. I think it probably will come out now that we're getting it away from him because it looks like the tip of it is starting to come out. But on top cuts like this, you can propagate from this node at the very top. But in my experience, like the odds of it actually getting roots and successfully growing is pretty slim. So I always leave the top node attached to the node below it as one piece. So let's see. And let's see if he destroyed the top of this one. Yeah. Hopefully you guys can see he's chewed on that one. There's a hole in the middle. You can see that's been chewed too. This poor plant. You probably can't wait for me to make a decision on what I'm gonna do with that planty wall in my bathroom and move it, which is a shame. Although honestly, you guys, it I have been having to put a sheet underneath it right after I water it or a towel. I think I did use an old pillowcase the last time because it's just been guttating so much, dripping all over my wooden nightstand and I didn't want it to ruin the nightstand. So it's probably gonna be a good idea, idea for me to move it regardless because of that and put something else there that's not going to guttate. Maybe something in the prayer plant family that and something that is small and stays upright so that Theo is less likely to mess with it. Although he does like to stick his face in Rose who's on the other nightstand, that's my Calathea Rosa Picta medallion, but he's been pretty good about not chewing on the Calatheas, which is ridiculous, you guys, because the Calatheas are non-toxic. He has just decided that every plant he's gonna try to chew on is gonna be a toxic one. It's ridiculous. Future Drew here. So I just wanted to cut in and clarify something regarding toxic plants and pets, because I'm sure a lot of you are like, oh my gosh, he's been chewing on your plants. Aren't you worried that something is wrong with him? Honestly, most of our house plants, the crystals that are toxic within them are highly irritating to pets. And so 
couple bites into a plant, typically their mouth gets so irritated that they will stop. And if a pet ingests just one small bite, typically that is not going to harm them. It's only when they start to consume large quantities of the plant or repeated small amounts over an extended period of time that it becomes a problem and you will start to see signs that they are sick. I have not seen any of those signs in Theo. Honestly, I think he's just chewing on it and not necessarily swallowing any of it. That's why I'm not super concerned. And there are other plants plants, you guys, that are deadly toxic to your pets. And the main ones that you really have to worry about are plants that are in what is commonly referred to as the daylily plant family. And I will flash what the actual scientific plant family is up on the screen for you. And then also plants that are in the true lily plant family, which I will also flash that scientific name up on the screen for you. Those plants can cause kidney failure in as little as like two days in animals. Those are the plants that you really need to be concerned about in every single aspect of them is toxic, even the pollen. So if it gets on a cat's fur and the cat is bathing, they're then consuming that and it can be extremely fatal. But with most of our toxic house plants, it is not something that is going to kill them unless they just consume large, large, large amounts. And if you don't get them to a vet right away, if they start to show signs that they are ill. All right. What are you doing, Theo? You're snuggling with the orbifolia. You're n what are you eating the orb? He's literally trying to figure out how to snuggle up to the orbifolia. He has decided he is not going to snuggle up to the orbifolia. He is just going to lay in the open part of the table. He's so crazy, you guys. Okay, this is good to go. Once again, I'm glad everything's fitting in one jar so far. All right, on to this big gal. And let's see if we have a place where I've cut before or not. Does not appear so on this vine. Definitely not on that vine and not on that vine, but let's just play pretend, why don't we? So let's assume that we saw a little nub. It would be right in between here and here it would be a part of stem sticking out. That means that this is a spent node. Also, you guys, spent node, it's a term. It's a term that is based on an understanding that I believe is based on scientific knowledge, but I've heard people say that they have had what is a spent node or what should be considered a spent node push out growth before. I am trying to think if I've ever had it happen on any of my plants. If I can find one, I will like flash it in here. But like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure that that is like 100% always the case, but always better to err on the side of caution. So if we did have that here, we are going to assume that means no new growth can come from this node. Now you can get roots, but no new leaves can come from this node. So I would not want to make this a node by itself. I would want to keep it attached to this node, if that makes sense. But since this one does not have anything like that, once again, we are just going to cut this up into individual nodes. Now this is actually two nodes because for some reason there's not a leaf right there. I could try and do this one by itself. Like in my experience, it's kind of like a 75, 25% chance of if it will actually get roots and push a leaf. Now on epiprimidums, more often than not, it will. Other plants, not so much, but I'm just gonna leave it like this. I don't really feel the need to separate it. Okay, so this right here, once again, is the top cut. So I'm going to leave this attached to this node and I don't need to trim that down more, so. Okay, so while I'm doing this, let me just get you guys caught up on a few things as well, since we have time to chat. So a lot of you have been asking me like how the plant business stuff is going. And, you know, I'd mentioned that I got approved to be a vendor at local farmer's markets. I've not actually done a farmer's market yet because we hit hundred degree temperatures, even higher on the feels like, I think feels like yesterday was like, I don't know, 115, 117, something like that ridiculous. And I just really did not want to be out in the heat and the plants are gonna start to wilt. And as one of you said to me, wilting is not a good look on plants, especially when you're trying to sell them to people. So that's why I haven't done a farmer's market yet. I do still need to plan my next pop-up for the last weekend of June. I haven't done it yet because honestly, you guys, I had really good momentum going on the planty business and getting everything kind of done. and ramped up the way I said I was going to. And then I really, quite honestly, I, I lost all that momentum when Toby got sick. And obviously, as I've told you before, he was my main priority at that point. But then I was going through the sadness, the depression, the grief phase, 
and it's just been hard to get motivated back in to ramping things up. I still have days where I cry. I feel like at least every day I cry about something because I see something that reminds me of him or whatever, you know, his fur pops up on a plant. Actually, that's when I had to clean up the catastrophe from 3 a.m., his fur was all entangled in pearl. That made me cry. Like, once again, eventually that will stop, but it's still relatively early on. And I know I've told one of you, I think I've only told one of you, but he hasn't actually been buried yet. So the funeral home used to be owned by an elderly couple and their son also helped out. And they were awesome. They were so awesome. Well, found out when I had to look into using their services again for Toby that I guess they retired. The son didn't want to take over the business. And so they were sold to a chain called Bond Memories, I think it is. And I saw the reviews, the reviews were not good. And honestly, I'm not happy with their services, really. They've jacked up the cost on everything massively. And the sheer fact that we are now almost, what, a month and a half, I think, since he passed away and he has not been buried, I am not happy. And so originally I was told there were two other pets ahead of him and the weather was kind of funky. It was like raining a little bit every single day. So they said there were weather delays, which I kind of get, but honestly, I have been to plenty of human funerals that were done in the rain. They just set up a tent, but I don't know. Then apparently when I called three weeks after he passed and said, what's going on. They told me their tractor that they used to dig had broken. I really wanted to reply back, ever heard of a shovel? I didn't, but it would have been nice if they would have called and told me their tractor had broken. It was working again when I called them and they had finished the two burials that were ahead of him and told me he was next in line. They then told me they couldn't tell me when yet because they had to schedule it with the people who actually come and do the digging. So apparently they're outsourcing their digging, which is making things take longer. But a few days later, she contacted me and said, okay, we can do it on Tuesday. So that would have been a week ago yesterday, but it ended up being thunderstorms and severe weather. So they had to cancel it. And once again, she couldn't tell me when exactly they could reschedule it for because she had to contact the people who did the digging and see when they were available and all that kind of fun stuff. So I still have not heard back from her. Future Drea here again. So I did finally hear back from her a few days after recording this video and apparently a bunch of her staff quit. And so now they can't do the burial until somebody from one of their Florida locations is available to come out. It's ridiculous. I feel like I am like not able to have full closure because this is lingering. I did go ahead and work out ordering his headstone with her in the meantime, because originally I was just gonna do it while I was there, but it's, this has been taking so long that I'm like, I might as well go ahead and get that done. So not exactly happy with that. And I feel like, you know, that's also kind of holding me back from getting fully ramped back up and motivated and everything from the business side, because it's like, that's still lingering. And I just want to have that done, but I'm trying. I am trying to get things ramped back up doing the best I can. Okay, these are good to go. So we are done potting up with these propagations. Let me just move them out of the way. All right, I think next thing we're gonna do is maybe pot up the few corms that I have. So I'm trying to remember, one of these is definitely an Alocasia Bambino. I think the other one might be an Alocasia Maharani. I'm pretty sure it's a Maharani. And I've been doing this the same way as I always have. If you are not familiar with how I propagate Forms. I do have a video on it for you guys. I will link that down below for you. So I've done everything the same way and they each have a new leaf now. So that's the phase at which I like to pot them up. And actually you guys, I take that back. We are going to wait and do those after we pot up the plants that I dry rotted because I have my epiphyte mix for those plants already ready and I do not have forest floor mix mixed up, which I need for the alocasia. So let's do this first, then I'll mix up the forest floor mix and we'll do the corms. So let me grab, there's actually a lot of these, you guys. Let me, let me grab a few to start with. Okay, let's take a look at the monsteras first. Look at all of these beautiful new healthy roots that have come off of just this one root here. And this was an aerial root, I believe, that was already kind of starting on the plant just 
up above the soil line before I dry rotted it. And everything else is looking super healthy here. This is a relatively small one, so I'm okay with the number of roots that are on here going ahead and potting this up. I can see right here, there is a leaf that was trying to come in that died off in this process, which is a shame, but that's okay. Eventually there will be more new leaves. Okay, let me, let me just rest this guy over here and let's see. I did also, nope, that's not what that is. <laughs> I did also clean all of the containers that the dry rot plants were in so they would be ready for us today. Now I don't need one that has a support on it. Let's see if I can find one somewhere. There we go. And I think that's what we're gonna use for this one. Yeah, that'll work. We'll do that. All right, so once again, I am just using my Epiphyte mix and I will go ahead and link my video on how to make my soil mixes down in the description also for you. So you guys can find it. And we're just gonna start with a little bit of soil in here. Okay, good to go. Get this guy centered in here and start filling it back in. And I will say some of the plants that I'm gonna be potting up here have more roots than others, but also I find at a certain point, if even if it looks like they don't have a lot of roots, when you move them from water to soil, the roots tend to take off more quickly, in my experience at least. And I find, once again, if you just pot it up into a pot that is the right size, that is just kind of barely big enough, I guess, for the root system on that plant, I find that that helps as well for it to just really take off like right away. So if you look at some of these plants that we're gonna look at here in a second and think, oh, that's not a lot of roots, trust me. It will really take off once I get it potted up. So this one is good to go. Just gonna set it aside over here for now because I do need to put my plant tag labels back into these after we get them potted up. I am like blowing up over here. I don't know what all these messages flying in on my phone are, but okay. Let me see here. We got our next one. Oh, there's two in here. Okay. So as you can see on this one, for example, there's not as much root activity, but once again, I know when I get this into a pot, it's gonna to start to take off. This one has a little bit more going on, nowhere near as much as on the one we just potted up, and these are nowhere near as white. That's not totally concerning to me because I also didn't do a great job staying on top of changing out the water. So there was a little bit of brown stuff from the petioles, the old petiole sheaths that was in the water, and that can end up kind of staining the roots. So I'm not totally concerned, but I am gonna go get these rinsed off real quick. So since these do have a slightly smaller root structure, ideally I would go into a slightly smaller container or just not fill the container up as much. I'm just trying to decide here. I think I have one that's a little bit smaller. It's like a McDonald's cup from when my parents were here. But this is a little bit narrower, I think a little bit shorter. Okay, so I'm gonna take the one that has the smaller root system, I think, into here, maybe. The only other option, you guys, really, is to go into one of these little cups, but I'm worried about it staying upright. Eh, that might work. I mean, it would probably have to be repotted relatively soon, but that's fine. Like I said, I would rather do that than risk having it in too much soil. So I think we're gonna use this little one for this one and we'll use that one for that one. So I'm just gonna get going on this again. And actually you guys, I'm probably gonna kind of speed up some of this potting up for this. I really just want you to see how the plants are doing, the amount of roots that they've gotten. I don't know why I keep adding more soil in here, you guys, like that's gonna be way too much to get that to sit low enough. It just needs a little. But anyways, I'm, I really just want you to see kind of how the roots developed, how the plants are looking and doing. And if I keep talking my way through this, I'm looking right now, this already says I've been filming for an hour, which obviously once I edit, things out will be a little bit less, but I just don't want this to end up being a crazy long video for you guys. So I'm gonna speed things up. Okay, you guys, I've got this one potted up and as you can see, I didn't go all the way up because there was no need to. And once again, I just didn't want to like overfill this and have too much soil to root ratio, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna set that one aside and I'm gonna get our next place that we're gonna take a look at. And then when we get to the cat grass project, 
I have an update for you regarding Aeroid Asia and what happened in terms of getting reimbursed and everything for that last order of plants that I unboxed that was not looking so hot. So I will be giving you that update when we get to that point. But let me grab these other plants first. Okay, so we've got an assortment of plants in here, including this Monstera adansonii, variegated one. This leaf is looking quite yellow, but I believe it was looking yellow when I first got this plant anyway. It does look like it's trying to start pushing some new growth back over here. But we do have a fair number of roots here, and that is plenty in my opinion, especially if I go into one of these little pots. And so that is what we are going to do. So we're just gonna get a little bit in here. See if I can get this to sit low enough in here, otherwise I may need to cut a little bit of the stem off. Nope, I think that'll work. All right, got this guy squared away. I'm honestly running out of room, not just here, but in general for place to put these plants. I need to sell some more. I'll get back on, on it with the booking of the shows or the pop-up shops and everything, like I said. What else we got? We've got a Melanochrysum here. Okay, I'm not gonna pop this one up. That is very little root action going on on that one, so. It's just gonna have to stay in water for a little bit longer. But I see another one in here. Let's see if it has more roots. Yes, this one has more roots. So as you can see here, lots of roots growing out of this bottom node. So we can definitely pop this one back up. Let me see, it looks like I have another one in here too. Let's see how it's doing. Little two leafer. Yeah, this only has like one root on each side. I'm gonna leave that one in water with the other one as well for now. And I do have a three inch pot that was for a philodendron melanochrysum. It already had its tag on it. I think there was only a few plants that I had already like labeled for sale that were doing fine and ready to be sold that I dry rotted. So at least most of what I dry rotted wasn't plants that I had had for a long time because this is from the first order that I did for inventory back in March, I guess it was. But yeah, this should be okay in this pot. I might not fill it all the way up we'll see because this is a decent amount of root even though it's kind of like fine roots but it should be all right so get this one potted up real quick and then we will take a look at what else because it looks like this was a bunch of different types of plants in this particular jar glass so we'll see how well some of the others have done because these have all been in water for the same amount of time you guys so for whatever reason like for example those other melanochrysums why they haven't rooted as much yet don't know it's just how it goes sometimes okay so once again not going to fill that all the way up because we don't need to we don't want to potentially have too much soil in there for those roots all right let me go ahead and just show you these two first and then i'm just gonna like rapidly speed up the potting up of this so that we can get on to our other tasks so this is a philodendron sodoroy it is starting to push a new leaf as well and not a lot of roots, you can still see there's one of the older roots there. It's not rotted. This is actually looking really dark. I probably should have mentioned this in the root rot video. Sometimes when you have an aerial root, which is what this was, before you put it into water, it gets dark. Like it'll just stay dark because it was darker before it got into water. So that's the only reason that this looks this dark. I honestly though don't need this because it's not actually kicking off any new root growth. So there's no reason to really keep it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off just so it doesn't potentially cause a problem. Not that it should cause a problem, but if you don't need it, why keep it? So once again, not a lot of roots on here, but these are all new roots and this will start to kind of kick off way more quickly once we get it potted up. This is a philodendron majestic. It is starting to push new growth back here, or push a new leaf as well. Once again, not a ton of roots, but super healthy roots and it will kick off as well once we get it potted up. And so all of these are gonna be going into these little pots. And like I said, I'm just going to push right through this so we can make sure we can get everything done in a decent time frame for this video. Okay, so those are good to go. I have these that I know we need to pot up but I wanted to double check the pink princesses because last time I looked at them, you guys, I think there was maybe two that were rooting. Let me grab the other glass. These definitely have not been taking off well. And interestingly enough, well, let me get one out to show you first. So I think part of the problem, this is good, this one has a root on it. 
All right, that's an improvement. So as you can see, we have a new root pushing, but it's pushing from way up here. And this is like the newest node. All these nodes down here, nothing is happening. And I'm seeing this on all of them. And some of them, I didn't have these higher nodes in the water. I'm not exactly sure what the deal with this is, you guys. I've never really seen this happen on a plant before. Usually with this many nodes under the water, at least one would have started to root by now. So I have now made sure that they are all submerged to where the new node is in the water. And we'll see if we start to get more roots because of that. Now, I don't know that I'm gonna pot this up necessarily right now because that's still just one tiny root. I do see some others are now, okay, we're starting to get some more roots going on in here. Now that I, oh, we actually are getting a lot more roots now that I've put them all lower in there. Let's see if anybody's ready to pot up. Cause when I checked these a few days ago, most of them had no roots. Okay, this one's pushing a couple, still not necessarily enough to warrant being potted up. Oh, this guy's got a, quite a few going on and pushing a new leaf, you see that? Okay, this is four roots. I'm thinking we might go ahead and pot this one up. Let me set that one aside. But then here, as you can see, nada. But I didn't have these top nodes in water before. So let me get these back in there. I probably need to add a little bit more water too because that one I just put back in there is not even below the surface line. Let's see in the other glass how we fared. Okay, well, this one's starting to get a new root further down. That's interesting. I wonder why that's the only one. Also, why is it white? That is fascinating because as you saw in the other ones, they're like more pinkish. Maybe it's just because it just started to push out and then it'll turn pinker. I don't know. Well, that's interesting. Okay. Here we've got absolutely nothing happening. <laughs> Telling you. Once again, absolutely nothing happening. All right. This one's got one little root going on. No, I'm probably blocking y'all's view. Kind of like that first one. Just add that in with that other glass where that one was. And it looks like this one's finally starting to push something from not the highest node. Oh, and it's got a few, are these old? Oh, no, these are just old. These aren't new down here. So yeah, so that's gonna have to stay in water. All right, well, at least we have one we can pot up, but geez, it's crazy. Let me move these out of the way. Okay, so let's look at what's in here and this will be the last of what we need to pot up right now. I actually do have a couple others over there that are more of the Sotoroys and Majestics, but I was looking at them. I'm not 100% not comfortable with how much root action I'm seeing on them. So I think I'm gonna wait for another week or so on those. Okay, so here's another one of the Sotoroys. We do have just minimal, minimal roots on here, but they're coming out of every single node. So I'm okay with potting this up, except the only thing I'm questioning is Okay, I'm not gonna be able to get them all in here, which means I'm gonna have to go in a bigger pot. So I want more roots than this if I have to go in a bigger pot. So change of plans. We're not gonna pot that one up. <laughs> all right, then we have, what all do we have here? We have a varicosum. It does have a new growth point pushing through there. And once again, these are not a lot of roots, but the varicosums will take off pretty quickly. But if this will stay upright in a little pot, <laughs> we'll, we'll have to see. I may just have to stake it up or something. Either that or it's going to have to stay in water longer. I don't know. Okay, question mark on that one too. I swear you guys, things are so complicated sometimes. All right, so this is a Splendid and I have two of them here looking beautiful, but <laughs> they had to restart in water here. Once again, not a ton of roots, but Decent number coming out of here and we've got some coming out of this node. Now this one will have to go into one of these, which once again makes me a little bit nervous. I don't know you guys, Ooh, it's making me nervous. We may not do these ones. Okay, this is another Sauteroy and interestingly, this one has pushed out two new growth points or is starting to push out two new growth points, one right there and one right there. So that's kind of exciting. So this is gonna be a multi-vine Sauteroy now. And we do have quite a few roots coming out down here. Some of this is old root growth, but you can see even though this is old root, there is new roots coming from that. So unlike on that other plant where I removed those old roots, I'm not gonna do that on this one. Once again, though, I feel like this would have to go, oh, well, the roots will fit. It's gonna be a little top heavy, I mean, 
You can use a chopstick, but I'm really kind of, they keep toppling over when I do that, so I don't know. All right, we're just gonna wait. We're gonna wait, we're gonna wait. We're gonna pot up this pink princess and we're gonna move on to maybe the cat grass. We'll see. is good to go. All right, I said we we're gonna do cat grass next, but I forgot about the corms. So let me get my forest floor mix mixed up. We will get those potted up real quick and then we will move on to the cat grass. Okay, I've got our mix ready. I've got two just little two inch pots, which I think should be fine for these. And honestly, you guys, I know I said earlier that they had each gotten their first new leaf. As you can see here, the Bambino actually has two leaves because once again, I've just been behind on getting my planty chores done. So this one is definitely ready to go. Let's see how much root we have going on. It's actually not as many roots as I was expecting for already having two leaves, but that's okay. And then just set that guy there for a second. And then, like I said, I, I'm pretty sure this is a Maharani looking at this. And this one, <laughs> it looks a little awkwardly shaped because once again, <laughs> I'm behind on things and I didn't realize I had a shot glass over it. I didn't realize the leaf had already started to push out. And so it was having to bend over because it didn't have room, enough room above it to open up all the way. So yeah, my bad. Sorry, little corn, but let's see. Oh, way more root activity going on on that one. And this one, I'm pretty sure I did after that one. I don't know, maybe the Maharani just gets roots quicker and easier, but very beautiful looking. Okay, since this one does have more roots, so I'm gonna put it in slightly taller pot while I pot these up. Let me get this done real quick and then we're gonna do your cat grass, Theo. He's being very good right now, sort of. I mean, by good, I mean he's sleeping, but he is sleeping on the table that he's not supposed to be sleeping on, but we'll take our wins where we can. these two because this was completely dry mix. The others I'm going to wait until tomorrow sometime because it was a fresh bag of orchid bark that I was using so it is definitely still quite moist. And I'm going to clean up a little bit and we'll see what we got to do to make this cat grass happen and I'll update you on Aeroid Asia. All right you guys so I've got the cat grass box open here and honestly this says cat grass only lasts for a few weeks and then they're suggesting that you have to buy more. That seems a little bit ridiculous considering this costs like 10 bucks. So those of you out there who have had cat grass before or pet grass, I guess I keep saying cat. I think it's for all pets. Um, let me know. Does yours only last for a few weeks and then you have to buy more? Comment below. I'm very curious to know. So this says that we need to add our soil disc, which is what that is. This is probably the seeds. And then this is our little planter, which I think is a bamboo recycled planter. So that's nice. And it says we're gonna add this in here with enough lukewarm water to fully moisten the soil. And then after the water absorbs, we stir the soil and let it sit for 10 minutes. We're gonna fluff the soil and remove about a cup for later use. Put the seeds in, put that cup for later use on top, put it in a warm semi-dark area away from light, but not in complete darkness. Okay, we can do that. And while I'm getting this going here, aerodation. Well, actually, let me get this into something with water first, then we'll talk about aerodation. One second. Okay, guys, we've got this in water. It's already starting to expand, so let's speed this process up a bit. Why don't we? that's been sitting for the allotted amount of time. So I'm going to get some of the soil in here, sprinkle the seeds in and do everything else that it said to do. Let me just make sure. Okay, so I did reach out to Aeroid Asia after unboxing that delivery. I let them know what happened. I let them know that I had talked to DHL and that DHL had told me that they had to be the ones to make the claim. And so they asked me to send pictures of the plants and everything, I did that. 
And then my contact said he was going to check with his boss and see about getting me sent re replacement plants. He then reached back out, I guess yesterday, maybe it was, no, I think it was the day before, and asked for a list of the plants again. I was kind of like, I already sent that to you, but I sent him the consolidated list. And basically he came back and he said, he made it sound like they're going to ship me replacements. But then I got another email saying, or asking if I would help cover the cost of shipping the new plants. And I was kind of like, really? So I replied back and was like, well, can't you make a claim with DHL? They told me you can make a claim with them. I can't do it myself. You would have to be the ones to do it and they should cover your costs. So then last night, right when I was getting ready to go to bed, I got an Instagram message from him, which I thought was weird that we've been going back and forth via email. Like why all of a sudden did you switch over to Instagram? I don't know. So he was asking me, if all of the other plants other than the ones I listed were okay. And so I kind of told him, I was like, well, I mean, okay is a little bit of a subjective term. Were they alive? Yes. Were they in great condition? Not all of them. Some of them were. And I told him which ones. So I'm now like waiting to see what he says about that. So the, actually what I checked on my phone earlier that I was telling you was from them was him reaching out to me on Instagram. So I did reply to him and give him everything. I just told you guys. now. This told me to only leave a cup out of this, unless I'm compacting this like way down. I guess it did say to tamp it down. Well, it said to press down gently after you put the seeds in. I don't know. There's no way all this is gonna fit in here. Am I not supposed to put all the seeds in? No idea, you guys. I don't know if I'm supposed to put all the seeds in or not. It doesn't say not. I don't know. Anyways, so yeah, so that's what's going on with that. So I'm not sure how that's going to play out, we will see, and I will let you know, but yeah, it was weird. It was really weird. All right, let me get my hands rinsed off, and well, I don't necessarily need to rinse them off, I guess. So we have the seeds here. I mean, it seems like a lot of seeds. I have no idea if I'm supposed to like save something. I have no idea, you guys. I mean, there's a lot of seeds. Are you, I mean, that's a lot. I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. I feel like these instructions could be a little bit better. I mean, I guess if one seed equals one blade, I don't really, I've never really thought about or looked up exactly how grass grows. <laughs> but I mean, I know how the grass in my yard grows and it's a creeper, right? Um, but this is like straight up blades and I have no idea, like I said, how many blades per seed. I don't know you guys, we'll see here. I'm just gonna get these sprinkled around and maybe I'll save some so if this does just totally die off in a few weeks. I can grow some more. Once again, if anybody knows what I'm actually supposed to be doing here, comment down below and let me know. This was kind of like an on the whim project after the insanity at 3 a.m. from Theo who has disappeared in the 10 minutes I walked away to let the soil sit like it said to do. No idea where he went. Hopefully he's not up to no good. He has taken to liking sleeping on one of the dining room chairs. And I think it's because he can see out the dining room window while he's sleeping there. So maybe that's where he is. I actually found him just sitting there like a human being waiting for like dinner at the table the other day. It was really super cute and kind of funny. But yeah, he's definitely kind of coming into his own. He's finding his own places that he likes to chill now. Okay. Maybe that's all I'll put for now. I mean, there's still a ton in there. I, I don't know, you guys. I know they're not all probably gonna take, but all right, I'm just gonna do this and that way, like, we'll see how this goes and then I can grow some more if I need to. And clearly, apparently, I may need to find a place just to get seeds to keep redoing this, but hopefully this will turn out okay. And once again, there is no way all of this soil is going to fit on top of this, I don't think, but that's okay. Then I'll have extra for when I plant the rest of these. And I am going to probably uh, cover this with a little plastic, poke some holes in it so it's not trapping in too much moisture. But I do know this is not my first time growing stuff from seeds, you guys. I have propagated and grown Dichondra Silver Falls for my mother plant from seeds. And so I know kind of how to do seed germination. I have just never done it with grass. But all right, I think that's about all that's gonna fit in there. And it did say to lightly press it down. So that's what I'm doing. And like I said, I will cover it with a little plastic, pop some holes in it, and I will put it somewhere warm and not too bright. It's probably going to have to go on my kitchen counter somewhere. 
I'll figure something out. But I hope you guys have enjoyed coming along with Theo and I today, getting caught up on our planty chores. If so, please be sure to click that like and or subscribe button down below. And I look forward to seeing you guys again next time. Aloha.